Good morning, Team Alabama. We are ready for Chapter 4 in Hatchet. Please join me reading this on your Chromebook and read it along with me. Page 29, Chapter 4. The memory was like a knife cutting into him, slicing deep into him with hate, the secret. He had been riding his 10-speed with a friend named Terry, and they had been taking a run on a bike trail and decided to come back a different way, a way that took them past the Amber Mall. Brian remembered everything in incredible detail. Remembered the time on the bank clock in the mall flashing 3.31. Then the temperature, 82. And the date. All the numbers were part of the memory. All of his life was part of the memory. Terry had just turned to smile at him about something, and Brian looked over Terry's head and saw her, his mother. She was sitting in a station wagon, a strange wagon. He saw her and she did not see him. Brian was going to wave or call out, but something stopped him. There was a man in the car. Short, blonde hair the man had, wearing some kind of white pullover tennis shirt. Brian saw this and more, saw the secret, and saw more later. But the memory came in pieces and came in scenes like this, Terry smiling, Brian looking over his head to see the station wagon and his mother sitting with the man. The time and the temperature clock, the front wheel of his bike, the short blonde hair of the man, the white shirt of the man, the hot hate slices of memory were exact. The secret. Okay, go ahead and add in your Chromebooks on your Google Doc. What is the secret? Brian opened his eyes and screamed. For seconds, he did not know where he was, only that the crash was still happening and he was going to die, and he screamed until his breath was gone. Then silence, filled with sobs as he pulled in air, half crying. How could it be so quiet? Moments ago, there was nothing but noise, crashing and tearing and screaming, and now quiet. Some birds were singing. How could birds be singing? His legs felt wet and he raised up his hand on his hands and looked down at them. They were in the lake. Strange. They went down into the water. He tried to move, but pain hammered into him and made his breath shorten into gasps. And he stopped, his legs still in the water. Pain. Memory. He turned again and sun came across the water. Late sun cut into his eyes and made him turn away. It was over. The crash. He was alive. The crash was over and I am alive, he thought. And then his eyes closed and he lowered his head for minutes that seemed longer. And when he opened them again, it was evening and some of the sharp pain had abated. Okay, add abated to your vocab. Abated means kind of lessened or gone away. There were many dull aches, and the crash came back to him fully. Into the trees and out onto the lake, the plane had crashed and sunk in the lake, and he had somehow pulled free. He raised himself and crawled out of the water, grunting with the pain of movement. His legs were on fire, and his forehead felt as if somebody had been pounding on it with a hammer, but he could move. He pulled his legs out of the lake, and he crawled on his hands and knees until he was away from the wet, soft shore and near a small stand of brush of some kind. Then he went down, only this time to rest, to save something of himself. He lay on his side and he put his head on his arm and he closed his eyes because that was all he could do now. All he could think of being able to do, he closed his eyes and slept, dreamless, deep and down. Page 32. There was almost no light when he opened his eyes again. The darkness of night was thick, and for a moment he began to panic. To see, he thought. To see is everything, and he could not see. But he turned his head without moving his body, and he saw that across the lake the sky was light gray, and that the sun was starting to come up. And he remembered that it had been evening when he went to sleep. Must be morning now. He mumbled it, almost in a hoarse whisper. As the thickness of sleep left him, the world came back. He was still in pain, all over pain. His legs were cramped and drawn up, tight and aching, and his back hurt. And when he turned to move, worst was a keening throb in his head that pulsed with every beat of his heart. It seemed that the whole crash had happened to his head. 
He rolled on his back and felt his sides and his legs moving things slowly. He rubbed his arms. Nothing seemed to be shattered or even sprained all that badly. And when he was nine, he had plowed his small dirt bike into a parked car and broken his ankle. Had to wear a cast for eight weeks and nothing was, and there was nothing now like that. Nothing broken, just battered around a bit. His forehead felt massively swollen to the touch almost like a mound out over his eyes, and it was so tender that when his fingers gazed it, he nearly cried. But there was nothing he could do about it, and like the rest of him, it seemed to be bruised more than broken. I'm alive, he thought. I'm alive. It could have been different. There could have been death. I could have been done. Like the pilot, he thought suddenly. The pilot in the plane, down in the water, down in the water, strapped in the seat. He sat up, or tried to, the first time he fell back, but on the second attempt, grunting with the effort, he managed to come to a sitting position and scrunch sideways until his back was against a small tree, where he sat facing the lake and watching the sky getting lighter and lighter with the coming dawn. His clothes were wet and clammy, and there was a faint chill. He pulled the torn remnants of his, of his windbreaker pieces, really, around his shoulder and tried to hold what heat his body could find. He could not think. He could not make thoughts, patterns, thought patterns work right. Things seemed to go back and forth between reality and imagination, except that it was all reality. One second he seemed only to have imagined that there was a plane crash and that he had fought out of the sinking plane and swum to shore, and that it had all happened to some other person or in a movie playing in his mind, and then he would feel his clothes wet and cold and his forehead would slash a pain through his thoughts, and he would know that it was real, that it had really happened, but all in a haze, all in a haze world. So he sat and stared at the lake and felt the pain come and go in waves and watched the sun come over the end of the lake. We're going to stop there for right now, Team Alabama. Please add to your facts. That's page 34. We're going to stop. Please add to your facts now.